So um, we have uh, sent out, an email has been sent out. If, if you don't receive it, it's totally okay. Um, but we've sent out an email to, to the church family uh, to, uh, yeah, um, inviting you to be a part of Right Now Media. If you have not been a part of Right Now Media, if you've never seen anything on Right Now Media, it is a, um, a resource with, with literally over 2,000 different resources that we have available. And so I'm excited. Uh, church leadership has, has made the investment in this, and it's, it's free to you uh, as a part of our church, as a guest with our church. Um, and so you can do a couple things right now. If you don't have that link, you can scan the QR code. I was actually going to test it. I didn't, but I think you might be able to scan it from in here. Um, yes. All right. Sweet. Um, or you can just text uh, the word life track to 49775 either way and it will hook you up with a link that you can click on and get registered to be a part of right now media get a right now media account through the church and I'm really excited uh, as today we're going to talk about increasing understanding um, this is an opportunity to do that to to invest in ourselves through um, whether it's through life group or through Bible studies or just independent individual studies um, whatever it may be just to, to give your kids um, Bible programs that they can watch. Um, there's so much here and so many different ways that we can use it. And so I'm excited about that is, um, and, and what the potential is for that. And so um, if, if you don't get it, there is a, a sheet at the um, Welcome Center as well. Uh, and if you have any questions once you get there or trying to get there, don't hesitate to ask. I'd love to help you uh, get signed up for that. So this morning we were talking about um, increasing understanding as we have our, our mission, um, to be epic, uh, to increase understanding is growing in the wisdom of God, his word and his will. And I, it's funny as I was thinking and preparing, I, I, I don't know. I like winter. Um, I like snow. And I remember one time when I was in high school, I, I, I don't remember, um, we had received a snow. I don't remember exactly how much in my head. I'm like, I think logically I'm thinking like three inches of snow, but I really want to say like six inches of snow. It felt like there was a lot. Um, I, I graduated from high school in Minneapolis, Kansas, not Minnesota. So it probably was more like one inch instead of six, but there was snow on the ground. And I remember that. And, and I had a friend of mine, um, his name was Brad. We had a river that have a river that runs through the edge of Minneapolis, the Solomon River. No relation to Solomon in the Bible. Uh, but we had thought, man, this would be really cool for us to to go and to. There's a bridge that goes over the Solomon River, and there was this heavy blanket of snow. We thought it'd be really cool. We go write our names in the snow, and so that everybody that drove over the bridge could see our names, and that would be awesome. Um, we didn't really, I think, think it through in a lot of ways. I'm not sure that we considered everything we should have other than the fame and fortune of our name in snow, our name in lights. Uh, that's what it felt like to us anyway. Um, so we went out, and we went out on the ice above the dam on the Solomon River, and we proceeded to write our names in the snow so that everybody could see them. We didn't consider the flow of water beneath the ice. We didn't consider how deep that water might have been. We didn't think about the temperature of that water and how close to freezing it must have been. We didn't think about any of those things. We just thought about how cool it would be to have our names in that snow and everybody see them. And so we walked on that ice with no fear. And I think that walking on that ice is kind of like walking with God. I think we have to have a fear, an awareness of who God is, the power that God has, the authority that he has in our life. I think for those who aren't walking right with God, he's very dangerous. And that's a scary thought. We like to think of the attributes of God that are comfortable to us. He's loving. He's kind. He's merciful. He's full of grace. And those attributes are all absolutely true of God. But the fact is, God is also holy and righteous, and he's just. 
We talked earlier in this series about there will come a day when God will judge everyone and he will do it justly. He will do it fairly. And if we think about the fact that we will be judged by God fairly one day against his word, I think that thought should make us tremble at least a little bit. And if you're not sure, if you're not really tracking with that maybe, let, let me share some, some people in biblical history. You might remember the time of Noah. Noah was a guy who built an ark. His entire family got on the ark. I don't know if you remember or not, but the rest of the entire world was destroyed by a flood. You might recall the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah in the Bible who were completely destroyed by God. And I know you're probably thinking, but those people in those places were evil in the sight of God. They had done evil. They were disobedient and they deserved his wrath. And that is true. But I don't know if you remember a guy named Uzzah. You read about him in 2 Samuel or 1 Chronicles. Him and his brother Ohio were bringing the Ark of the Covenant. And, and as they were, they had it on a cart. And the Bible says a donkey stumbled and Uzzah grabbed hold of the Ark. And he died instantly right there. Like, it, 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 it's crazy. It says, the Bible says the anger of God was kindled against him. And I remember when I first read that, I'm like, he's just trying to help out. But God had given specific rules for them to follow, and they disobeyed. Uzzah disobeyed, and disobedience leads to death. And I know those are Old Testament stories, and you might be thinking the God of the Old Testament is different than the God of New Testament. The God in the Old Testament, he was... He had some wrath going on, but in the New Testament, he's much more loving. And I'm telling you, it's the same God. In fact, you, you might know the couple Ananias and Sapphira. Do you remember them? And, and we read about them in Acts chapter 5. Ananias and Sapphira were a married couple. They were a part of the new church, the early church, followers of Jesus. And, and as we read in, in Acts 4, you see the church is coming in unity and community and and. People are giving, and no one is in need. Everyone is incredibly generous and helping one another. And Ananias and Sapphira had this piece of land that they sold, and they conspired together. They talked together like, hey, we're not going to give all the money to the church. We're, we're just going to give some of it. But we want to look generous. We're not really going to be as generous as we want to look. And so Ananias comes and he gives the money to Peter. And Peter's like, is this, is this all the money? I'm like, a Anna, yeah, look at me. Look at how generous I am offering you everything. And Ananias died right there. And then Sapphira comes along a little bit later and she has no idea what happened. And Peter's like, hey, um, so you're, you're giving some money to the church for land that you sold. Is this everything? And she's like, yeah, absolutely. It's everything. We're awesome, super generous people. And she died right there. Disobedience leads to death. I think it's important to note that Ananias and Sapphira did not die because they didn't give everything to the church. They were disobedient in that they were prideful. They wanted to look and appear as something they really weren't. They wanted to seem generous, much more generous than they really were. And because of that, they lied. Peter says, you not only lied to, to me, to the church, you lied to God and the Holy Spirit. And that disobedience led to death. Acts 5.11 says, great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. God is the creator and sustainer of everything. Not only did he create, he sustains us. And if at any point he decides not to sustain us anymore, he can do that. He is God. Our mission is to be epic. Four things that we, we need to do every day to be on mission, to evangelize the lost to praise the king, to increase understanding, and to care for those 
and need. Today we're going to talk about to increase understanding. This means to grow in the wisdom of God, his word, and his will. To know who God is, to know what God says, and to do what God wills. Proverbs 9, 10. This, this is, wh- where do we start in this? If we're going to live this out, where do we start? Proverbs 9, 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And I think fear here absolutely means fear. Like when we approach God, we should be very aware of who he is. I think, I, I love, we, we've talked communion and humility coming before God, but also boldness coming for God and a little bit of fear, a little bit of trembling as we approach him. I think this means putting God in a proper place in our life. Where is he in our life? Not not just first, but always. Giving him his due place, his authority. He is the king. And this means that I must surrender, I must surrender to God's will, not mine. I think about that surrender, it seems like a, a weak word. I had a baseball shirt several years ago, it said, the last to surrender. And it was great for baseball, but it's not good for our walk with, with God. And so we must surrender to God's will, not ours. We must submit to a life that pleases God instead of pleasing us. And we have to seek to love the things that God loves and to hate the things that God hates. We surrender, submit, and seek. It's the beginning, that that fear, that start of the knowledge of the Holy One. Because understand, Holy One is actually plural in the original language. That indicates the Trinity. We must come to God with reverence and a little bit of, of trembling, of fear, recognizing who he is. That is the beginning of wisdom. But understanding starts with the knowledge of he is the Father, he is the Son, he is the Holy Spirit. He is three persons in, in one God. So how, how do we start all of this? Proverbs uh, 2, Solomon writes to his son, My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, Solomon's words to his sons, he continues into turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding. Turning our ear to wisdom, what, what are we listening to? What has our attention? Where is our focus? Solomon is saying, look, look, pay attention to what is wise. Listen to wisdom. Focus on that. Go to that. Don't get distracted by things that are not. And then apply your heart to understanding this. Live it in application. Indeed, if you call out for insight, God, help me see. And you cry aloud for understanding, Lord, help me to know. He goes on in verse 4 and says, If you look for it as for silver and search for it as hidden treasure. I love this. This is a great picture of what it looks like to just continue to seek understanding, to search for understanding. It's it's not, here's what it's not. It's not a picture of what it looks like when your husband goes to the kitchen fridge to find a bottle of ketchup. It doesn't look like that because it's on the shelf next to the mustard, but we don't find it. Mustard is fine. I'm good with that. Right? It looks more like it's 30 seconds until kickoff and he can't find the remote control, right? We're searching everywhere for this. We're intently looking for it. Every cushion overturned. Where is that thing? We have to find it. We have to continue looking. We might even find the bottle of ketchup in the meantime. I don't know, but we continue to look for it until it's found. And I think that is the picture that that Solomon is giving of what this searching and seeking for understanding looks like in a much bigger picture. And we never really find full understanding 
this side of heaven. So it's a continual, consistent search. Verse 5 says, Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. We search and we keep searching and we keep searching. And then we will find it and we will understand the fear and the knowledge. We call out to God. We cry out to God with all that we have until we find it. And I think as we do that, God will reveal himself. He will reveal himself in his word and he will reveal his will to us. We have to trust him. We have to trust the Holy Spirit as he guides us as we seek. This process of increasing understanding looks like turning to, leaning in to God with reverence, with respect, with awe, with a little bit of fear, and never stop turning and leaning in to God. There's always more to find. What does this process look like? Philippians 2 Uh, Verse 12 and 13 says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It's the continuation. We have to keep doing it. Paul says here in in verse 12, continue to work out your salvation. What, What does that mean? Continue to live it out. Continue to seek. Continue to work out things that you don't understand, but keep seeking God. Keep increasing your understanding of who he is, what his word says, and what his will is. And then in verse 13, it says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fill his good purpose. So we're working it out. We're living it out. We're trying to increase our understanding. But it's actually God who is working in us to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. To will to want, to desire, and to act, to live, to actually live it out, to live what out? His good purposes for you. Like God has a plan, and he will work it out through you as you are working it, work it out in you, as you are working it, your salvation out. And so as we live it out, as we continue to seek, to increase our understanding, to grow in wisdom, God is working in us, and we just have to trust the Holy Spirit as we apply that to our life to work out for his good purposes. So I I, I think sometimes it's really good, like as we come to communion, just a a deep look at where am I at? Where is my heart? A, a reflection on how am I walking with God? And am I, am I walking on thin ice? Are there things that I need to repent from and turn away from and turn to God? Do I need to get off the ice and, and get on solid ground with Jesus? And so just questions that I ran through my head. You don't have to answer, but you can definitely think, how did you increase your understanding of God each day this last week? How did you increase your understanding of God's word each day this week? How did you increase your understanding of God's will daily this week? And more importantly, how did you walk in that daily? So as we think about our days and how that looked, it's okay if, if maybe it didn't look as great as we want because we can still start even today. The beginning can be now, and we can, can continue to grow in that. Um, I mentioned last week that I was a 49ers fan. Jim Harbaugh is a former, former 49ers coach. Uh, he had on the locker room wall a saying, says, if you aren't getting better, you're getting worse. Um. I wonder if that's applicable to our understanding of God, his will, and his word. If we aren't increasing, then what are we doing? I mean, really, if we aren't increasing, what are we doing? God calls us to continue to increase our understanding, to continue to grow in his wisdom, 
to know his word and to trust and to live his will. And so if, if we're starting, James 1.5 says this, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. God wants us to have wisdom. He desires that we know him intimately. It doesn't say to ask books, doesn't say to ask your pastor, doesn't say to ask that really smart person in your Bible study that answers all the questions, it says to ask God and he will give generously. He will continue to give. As you continue to ask, he will continue to give without fault. That's incredibly encouraging to me, without fault. That, does, that means God isn't up there as you're asking and pleading to understand, to know, to grow. He's up there. He's, he's not, well, I know what you did last week, right? I know how lazy you, I know how long it's been since you've been in your Bible. Like, he isn't up there saying that. He gives without fault. God's good. And so we should pray to him for understanding and to ask for help. And then trust in the Holy Spirit for guidance, for correction, and for conviction. Like he should lead us in the path that we should go, trusting the Holy Spirit to guide us, but also to correct us when we get off that path when we get where we're not supposed to be. Gentle corrections, but then also conviction. If we're way where we're not supposed to be, like the Holy Spirit should convict us to turn from where we're going that is not where we're supposed to go and turn back to God and to walk in faith following him. And so how do we do this? How do we practically increase our understanding. We have to be in God's word every day. Quiet time in the morning, just you and God's word. Through Bible studies, through life groups, I'm really excited about Right Now Media and the potential that that gives us, the resources and tools that that gives us to be in God's word, to be learning God's word. It's incredible. Be talking with God every day, having conversations. I mean, it's okay to be driving down the road and have a random conversation with God, it's, it's beyond okay. But again, in your quiet time, pick some time. Maybe it's early in the morning before you get your day started. Maybe it's late at night as you're winding down. Maybe it's both where you spend time having a conversation with God. In our Bible studies, in our life groups, we should be praying with each other. We should be praying for each other. And we need to listen and follow him every day. Lean in and listen and then follow. Application, how we live this out is on us. It's between us and God. But I'm telling you, it is crucial. It is so important that you have someone in your life who will hold you accountable and who will encourage you to Jesus, who will point you to Jesus. And when you stumble, when you fall, when you're off path, point you back to Jesus and continue to point you back to Jesus. Ask and trust God to lead you. We, we can't be walking on thin ice. We need him as our solid ground. And I know that studying the Bible is hard. Praying is hard. Knowing what God wants me to do is hard, and then actually doing it is even harder. All of those things consistently seem really hard, but we can do it together. Like, we have God. Like that, that's first. We, we have to trust. That's why we need God. This is not going to be easy. It is going to be hard, but we've got God. And, and second, he's given us each other to encourage one another, to build one another, to point one another to Jesus. As we increase our understanding of, of who God is, what his word says, and what he wants from us, I think it deepens our relationship not just with him, but it deepens our relationship with others. It strengthens our desire to be a part, set apart with him, for him with others from the world.
1 Peter 14, 19. I'm not going to go real quick into this. Uh, I am going to go real quick into this because we're actually going to start a series here in a, in a little bit called Hope and Holiness, which we're going to walk through uh, 1 Peter a little bit. But I, I just want to read this real quickly because it's so good. It's so right on. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it is not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish. Turn your desires to God. Turn away. Do not conform to the world. Do not conform to sin. Fight sin and seek God. And ignorance here does not mean, like, it, it just means lack of knowledge. Like, don't act the way you acted before you knew Jesus. That's, that's what he's saying here. For you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially. God is a good judge, and he will judge us rightly that should make us fearful but there is hope because we are redeemed through the blood of jesus we are redeemed from our old life of self and sin by the precious blood of jesus we are called to live our life daily for jesus because he gave his life for us that's an incredible hope that we have in, in a redeemed life with and for Jesus. The fear of God helps us to know and respect his authority, his power, who he is, but the hope of Jesus lets us know that we are loved by God. His love is unconditional, yet his desire is for us to be holy, to be set apart from the world. Unconditional love is revealed in Jesus through his sacrifice on the cross. Our holiness is fulfilled in Jesus through our faith in him. If we surrender and submit our lives to Jesus, God sees us as he sees Jesus, perfect, sinless, holy, set apart. So we increase our understanding of God, his word, and his will. We will become transformed into the likeness of Jesus and into who God created us to be. Romans 12, one through two says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will in response to what Jesus did for us on the, on the cross. We should offer our life as a sacrifice daily as praise to him because we have been set apart. We've been set apart from the world. We've been set apart for Jesus. And as we increase our understanding, as we grow in wisdom of who God is, his word, his will, it changes us. Our desire becomes less and less for the world. Our desire becomes less and less for sin. And it becomes more and more for God and for God's word and to do God's will will. And then after we've renewed our mind, after we've continued to seek God and understanding, then we can test and approve what God's will is. We can look at our actions. We can look at our lives. We can look at what we say. We can look at other people and their actions, their lives, and what they say. And we can compare them. Does that line up with God's word? Does what I'm saying line up with God's word? Because if it doesn't, I can't approve it. But if it does, yes, yes, that's where I want to be. What does this mean for us? What does this mean for us right now? And, and quickly, God created and sustained everything, including us. Hey, you can choose not to. God calls everyone to live life in obedience to his word, and he will judge us according to his word. That should make us tremble. God knows that because we fail, because we fall short, we can't live in complete obedience to him, and he knows that, and he still loves us. And that's why he sent Jesus as a perfect sacrifice where we fall short. And in light of God's love and the sacrifice of Jesus, his blood spilt on the cross, his life given for us, in everything that we do, we should desire to live our life for him. 
daily, growing in the wisdom of God, his word, and his will. Walking on that ice is kind of like walking with God. On that river, years ago, I was not so wise. I didn't really think that through. I'm a different person now. As I look back 30 plus years, I'm changed. I've grown. I'm more wise. I think we walk around a lot of days without fear, and we think that we're okay. When I walked on that ice, I I didn't fall through. We didn't go into the water. We didn't almost drown or drown, obviously. We didn't get hypothermia or pneumonia or anything like that. We were okay. And I think we walk around a lot of times, and we think we're, we're okay. It's good. And we lose that fear, that understanding, that remembrance of who God is. On the river... That ice, as I think back, like one thing really bothers me. I have no idea how thick the ice was. I have a pretty good idea. I feel like the snow was three inches. I have no idea how thick the ice was. No clue. But I do know that it was there. It existed, and it saved me from falling in the water. I do know that. Jesus is the same way. Like we walk in this world, and there is one thing that will save us from eternal death, eternal separation from God, and that is Jesus. And and my prayer, my hope, I I don't want to make the same mistake that I made with the ice with Jesus. I I, I don't want to one day wish that I knew that I could remember details about Jesus. And, And I want to encourage you, don't make the mistake that I did on the ice. Get to know Jesus increasing in in our understanding and growing in in who God is, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, what his word says, and then how we should live out his will. Let's pray. (sighs) Lord, um, this life sometimes looks really hard, and, and I struggle sometimes to live out what you call me to do. And, and I just pray, God, for your help um, and for anyone who is in that same boat where we want to live for you because we know the sacrifice that you made for us and your son, Jesus. But God, we need your help to do so. We can't do it without you. And Lord, I, I know that we need each other. And so God, I just pray that you would come into our lives, that you would move in a way that would help us to continue to lean in, and to listen, to seek you, and to live for you. Surround us with people who would encourage us to do that. Lord, help us be an encouragement to others to do that. We love you, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.